Samurai! If there's one thing anyone can agree upon, is that Skogol's Mobile is first and foremost a player versus enemy experience. There's a player versus player mode, but only like 7 people and streamers actually touch that. It's not working! So you essentially always fight against AIs for all the relevant parts of the game. And much like in any game with a computer taking control of one side, there's certain patterns and exploits you can learn and abuse in order to take further advantage of the game. These range from basic and easy to figure out on your own, to more overall technical stuff. And that's what we're gonna be talking about today. We'll be displaying a couple of AI patterns and exploits for you to make the most of and improve your strategy. Now it's important to notice that just because these are common, it's not synonymous with the fact that they're going to occur every single time. In other words, do practice with these patterns, but do not count on them happening at every chance. Make sure to expect deviation. Lastly, I'd like to mention that this is a collaboration with veteran player Nadia001. The idea for this video is entirely his, and I agreed to collaborate, so major shoutouts to him for the information bits, as well as the clips accompanying them. With that out of the way, let's get started. The AI will always block a dash 1 and a ground 4. This is one of the easiest tricks you can learn, and the best to practice at forcing the AI to open itself for attack. Just use either a dash 1 or a ground 4, and the AI will not attack right away while they're blocking. The benefit of this is that both dash 1 and ground 4 gives you enough frames to backdash and plan afterwards. This is most useful to apply pressure against AI, and variants with time-based abilities like overclocked or block-based ones such as Neuromancer can profit this to stall out for a while or prepare their strategy without getting countered right away. The AI will always try to counter after the second dash 1 and ground 4. After a certain while, if you keep on using the block stall, the AI will end up retaliating, be it with normal attacks, specials or blockbusters. Depending on what they use, it may still be hard to approach or they leave themselves open. Don't even try. Don't even try. You wish. Don't even try. Don't even try. You wish. You wish. Some characters can pull this off by performing a quick pattern in order to bait the AI outside of blocking. While others will need the help of blockbusters or special moves. Keep in mind, if the opponent happens to have either blockbusters or specials ready to use, this counter is in jeopardy, as they can activate either of these and flat out evade your attack. The AI won't often break the first throw. Just as the sentence says, the first throw of the match is usually free, and the opponent will rarely try to break from it. This is useful for someone like Beowulf, in order to gather hype stacks as early as possible. Once you do that, they'll start reacting to them, breaking through every single time. This is done to discourage throw spam as much as possible, and it's made more dangerous against Cerebella, whose throw breaks can stagger. The only way to have the AI allow you to throw them again is by simply dealing regular combos. After a while, you should be able to successfully throw, but remember once you do so, the reaction counter will restart, so you have to keep the cycle constant. That being throw, do a couple combos, and repeat. The AI's actions after a combo will be influenced by the total distance between you and them. This exploit can be massive, as it's your gateway to getting as many openings as possible. After finishing a combo, the AI is likely to do the following actions. While up close, they'll be prompted to block. At a medium distance, they'll perform a sweep attack, regardless of whether it reaches or not. Lastly, from far away, the AI will dash towards you. Okay. 
best profited by long distance fighters such as Peacock and Robo Fortune, although some attacks, like Boxcar George, may still lead them to block instead. The AI's tagging patterns revolve around active buffs and debuffs. Ironically, this particular behavior is what makes Freestream worse than she should be. Health plays a fair factor in the odds of the AI tagging out, but the biggest influencers are buffs and debuffs. It's very simple, the more debuffs, the more likely they'll leave the field. Otherwise, the more buffs, the more likely they'll remain, even if they're on the verge of death. Debuffing an opponent could be used as a half-substitute for an outtake, albeit obviously much less reliable. On the other hand, if you need to inflict X amount of debuffs, you may want to consider ways of paralyzing them, such as stun or command grabs, otherwise they may possibly tag out. The AI will not react to charge attacks up to once per match minimum. Charge attacks are often a niche tactic due to many of them resulting in just a fairly damaging hit with minimal combo potential. Some exceptions to this rule exist, such as Segment and Painwell's charges, working as great combo openers and extenders. The AI gives you two or so free shots to make use of this, so you can get your easy opening. However, much like throws, making a repeated use of charges will lead to your opponents catching on and countering accordingly, most often through blockbusters, specials, attacking, or straight up regular attacks. It's because of this reason that charge attacks have to be rationalized throughout the match, and just like throws, the charge spam value is shared across the entire enemy team. While far away and blocking, the AI will dash once after 2 to 3 seconds have passed. Not much is needed to comment on this one. All you'd need to keep in mind is that should the AI be blocking while far away, they'll dash after a while. I've seen work you wish. You could catch them when they drop their guard with a projectile or a dash intercept. It's also very important to note that characters with projectiles, such as Peacock, Robo Fortune, and Black Dahlia, will try to use them as much as possible, as a means of dealing damage from the distance. Although as a bit of trivia, Fuqua and Annie will never use either the Love Projectiles or Crescent Cut respectively, perhaps because of their effects being potentially obnoxious on a defensive end. The AI will start cancelling its dash for guard after the second or third time being countered. This is a point of interest for those that rely on intercept abilities. At a certain point, the AI will begin to cancel its dash for a block, which can throw off your game plan more often than not. It's a good reason as to why command grabs and unblockables tend to be favorable, so you don't have to play the AI stop and go game. Outside of that, I'm afraid not much can really be done about it.